Hi everyone and welcome back. So in this video we are going to work on the Stripe integration. So we need some third party payment interface so that uh, we can work with the payments, right? So here we are going to create uh, another route. So here we are going to create uh, another API route in the router. So because this is a create react app and we are using react application. So in the component checkout and then inside checkout, uh, maybe a home.tsx. Okay, this component we will start building. First, we will take a look on the Stripe integration, how it works and what all things are needed to have a Stripe end-to-end -end running. So here in the code sandbox, we will just uh, check out the components, how it is being done here, just for the reference. So here we are using a card element from the stripe and initiating the payment. So first of all, we are going to hit some API. And then this is the card element, which has a form handler, form submit handler. Once you submit the form, that means we need to now process the payment. These are just like a card options, like either you use a credit card or some other options. This is just an API, which is creating the payment intent and it is returning the client secret right and that client secret we are using uh, so just like uh, this is some simple demo how it how it will work we are returning the client secret then getting the product detail and then using this client secret in the component so if i show you render success and uh, let's move it up Here we are entering the card number. I think there are some demo card numbers which are available, which we can try. So the demo card number for the credit card, I think it should be 4242 uh, that the that Stripe should be able to access and should be able to allow you to process. Okay, and I can just do the payment, enter the zip code and pay. Okay, so this is how the real processing will work. Now, if we try to see the code. So what we are doing here is this is a Stripe element and what how we are integrating first we are importing. First, we are importing the libraries like this Stripe, uh, React Stripe JS and uh, Stripe JS. These are the two libraries which we are adding to our front end react because this is all about the combination of both first of all we need to get the publishable key and the secret from the stripe so that is easy you go to uh, stripe and then just do the login and get the the secret generate your secret so that you can use the payment interface if you really want to use for your production application then you need to submit your text document you need to complete your profile verification process and all because you will start getting the payment and you are registering as a vendor so you need to get an approval end to end approval here we are just using a test account and just a test secret key so here first we will just uh, import of these two libraries and then we will do the load stripe load stripe requires uh, the key publishable key it will be passed to the front end okay because this is not a private secret key that we are going to keep at the server side. This is the publishable key. You will do a load Stripe and you will pass the key. So this will load the Stripe SDK for your front end React component. Okay, now you will just do a payment card like you might be using a card element and you will just allow user to enter the credit card information and submit. But before that, you need to get the secret secret from the server side so here we are going to make an api at the server side which is let's say the create payment I mean, api can be anything the 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 important matter here is we should be able to create a payment intent and return the secret from the server side so here there can be a api like api v1 payment create payment create payment in the json object will return the payment secret stripe secret right so it will just create a payment and it will create a payment intent A payment intent object contains the secret and the same secret will be used by our front end React component. You can see the load stripe and this is the client secret. 
and all sort of stuff will happen here you can see the handle submit so when you handle submit form after entering the credit card then you are doing going to do this first you will check the the credit card element card element is there then at the line 18 you are actually checking the con you are doing confirm payment and here you are using the secret key okay you are registering the secret key so this is the end to end flow we are going to follow the same process of doing it so these are some of the examples like okay if you are using card element or any other payment mode then we will do it like this so this is the payment service that will con that will give you the response now uh, we already have this structure uh, already created in the payment service we will start adding the required library for our front end so here pnpm add stripe uh, stripe react js or stripe js these are the two libraries we will be adding for our components So this is a Stripe JS, and then there is I think another uh, package we need to add is a Stripe React JS or React Stripe JS. So before doing all those things, what we need to do, we need to allow user to select an address. We need to show the session information, and then only we should allow you to enter the credit card or debit card informations and do the payment. Because before making the payment, you also need to select user address. I mean your 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 own address where you want to have a delivery, right? So we are passing the address ID in the payment uh, in the order. Okay, this is the address ID where we want to get the order delivered. Okay, now let's work on the the React component. How it really works? We will just do the load stripe. We are in, we have imported the libraries load stripe is coming from the stripe stripe js and the elements like the card element uh, and the use stripe is a hook so we are passing this key this key we can configure like what key we are going to use and then this is a stripe promise that means we are initializing the stripe sdk and this is a checkout component which will contains lots of things uh, for the ui okay here we can actually create a multiple segments like okay top sections and the middle section address sections and the card sections right top section is nothing but showing some banner information okay you are now you are actually making the payment this is your uh, final uh, card looks like and this is what you are ordering this is the these are the offers you can apply this is the discount you can get this is the total payment you are going to make all sort of banner information we can put inside a top section and then here we can we can use the same top section we will just import the same uh, images and all those things which we already have on the restaurant page so this is our banner looks like and now we are going to work on the left side bar to provide some kind of a navigation because in the left side bar we have these routes so currently these are not pointing to the exact uh, api and api routes sorry the front end routes so eats restaurant, eats chat, eats orders, eats checkout. So these are different routes and we can also decide some icons for them. I need to find some icons from the icons library to put and place them here. So these are this is the left side bar because from there we can click and we can navigate to these different pages like search, restaurant landing page, checkout page and the uh, the payment page maybe the the order history we can just look into we can also do the tracking of the order once the order is placed and the delivery partner has been assigned all those uh, links we can add uh, all of these in the left side bar so from the left uh, new bar we can actually switch to all these different routes let's say search this is the restaurant landing page and similarly we can also have some checkout i mean i'm trying to find some icon for the food like some icon like burger so we need to look into this icon library for that so let's try to find some icon for the burger food eats baker icon that's not really nice but let's try this 
for this icon so this is how we can search for any other icon which we wanted to add and just push copy this and paste it here and you need to import this so that's it uh, this is the restaurant checkout so this is a checkout that's a restaurant landing page and then similarly we have a search home page all these icons we can just explore and we can place them so now here this is chat this is the restaurant this is the payment this is checkout all those things are there it's just like we need to fill all these pages currently we are working on the checkout page after the restaurant landing page so so how the checkout page looks like now how, how the structure will look like in the top section you can just show the email and the session information here you can allow user to select the address and here in the bottom you will show some card information where user can select a payment mode okay uh, you can you can do the payment using card using upi using net banking using ptm wallet and all those stuff i mean with the stripe we are just planning to do with the credit card or debit card because that's what uh, we we know how to do using credit card interface using card element interface and here there will be a checkout button here we also need to show in the right sidebar in the right sidebar we also need to show the summary okay this is your total payment you can also apply some coupon card and all sort of stuff because that, that's an extension what you can do is you can uh, uh, add a text field okay offers and coupons coupons and when you enter some coupon code you can apply a discount in the final price okay that we can do a some kind of a service which which actually contains the coupon codes against the different services or different offers and here this is the card element interface from the stripe where you will enter the card and there is a submit button there then you click on it so here this is how you will get the user information we already know that we can use this uh, hook to get the session information which we just copied use auth that will give you the user from the context and then you can just show this user anywhere you want so we can just do add all imports so now this user we can just show uh, on different informations like there is a top sections now then there can be user info section then there will be address section then there is a credit card section so this, these are like a you can say um, child components we are trying to construct one after another so this is uh, once we have a top section then there is a profile section so profile section will contain the user profile information so here we can have just uh, two sections if user is logged in that means user session exists then we need to show a different message if user not logged in that user needs to log in then you can just show because this is this depends on our our design that we want do we want the user to come to this page if user not logged in right user can come by just navigation but if uh, user not logged in then we are just not going to show the session information we can just show some buttons okay do the login and then start adding items to the cart and then you can come to the checkout section because currently you are not logged in maybe in some food food uh, delivery platform they allow you to check out even you are not logged in and when you are doing a checkout then they will ask you to the login first like before selecting the address and before adding the payment informations and all it's all about okay let them uh, browse the sections and then once they are agree agree with the payment then only allow them to log in otherwise if you just put the login in front then they can't do anything and they will just skip your platform they won't even look at it so it's a logged in user session that uh, here we can print okay what is the username and the email and the first name last name join that and all sort of stuff we can info we can put we already have a user session object so that we can use to show the information about the user so that is the first is a user session information then second we are going to keep uh, so this is the first is a user session and second is the profile section top section profile section that is if else if user is there show the user information otherwise show the options to the login and assign so this is the profile section and we are passing the user object which we got from the session 
Now third section we are going to create is saved address section and we are going to pass the address array. So we already have the address APIs in the, the user service. Like you logged in, you can create your multiple address. There's a simple form we can create. You can create your address and you save it. And then if you want to fetch them, you can fetch it. So we can use the postman to create some addresses so that we can populate those addresses on the address section. So here uh, from the parent component, we will get the address as an array. And now we can just iterate. Iterate means we can just loop on to the addresses and show the addresses in the child component where we can show simple address card so that user can actually do the checkbox or can click on to that. Okay, this is my selected address uh, to which I want a delivery, right? So that's a selected address ID we also need to pass while creating the order and doing the payment. So we need to have the selected address object Maybe in the Redux state, okay, this is the selected address. And now you can actually start add, adding the payment information and do the payment. So next we are adding as a card section because uh, after the address section, we need to show the card. This is the card component. And in the card, we can show, okay, we support all the different cards like credit card, net banking, debit card, uh, or a UPI or different kind of a wallet. And then we can just enable only the credit card sections where you can actually do the payment using Stripe interface. So this is the card section and inside a card section, we can just put some same, same set of blocks and then we can just provide a different buttons. Okay. You can do the payment with the different, different platform, different modes you can see. So we can copy the same header and then uh, put the body content like, uh, we just put the different body content inside it. So these are the different buttons which you can stack vertically using flex and then you can allow them to do the payment with the different options. You can see this layout, the logged in user session is there, delivery addresses we will populate and the choose the payment method. Payment method is currently these are not coming as a vertically stacked so we can just check the layout, how they are arranged. So here I think we need to have a flex, flex column. Okay, this is good. So we can also add a margin padding and we will remove the height from this whole section because it is taking the, the fixed height that is creating the problem. So let's go to the component. Okay, so so we just added uh, some styling and now it is fixed. We can just remove the height so that all the buttons can come vertically. Okay, so we have the slices. Now we need to create uh, another slice that's uh, user because we need to maintain the user addresses. So it needs to be there in the somewhere in the, the Redux session. So we can create a user slice and then we can just create these uh, async actions to populate the user addresses in the Redux state. So where we need a user address during checkout only. So on that page, we will just dispatch an action. Okay, give me all the address of this user and that will give me the address. We will just uh, set up the slice here. Slice is the same. Uh, it will have some initial state and you will do some Redux actions. Here I think I already have some API endpoint. I think user addresses. I can see the fetch address at line 29 that we can use to fetch the user addresses. We don't need to pass the config object because it's all session based. So if your session exists in the cookies, you can actually 
make this API call without passing any ad additional authorization header. So we'll clean up these actions. We'll remove the, the config objects. So this is how you will call uh, API v1 auth service users addresses. So that we need to figure out like uh, what is the, the real URL. But this is the controller and here I can see the address controller. So I will copy in the slice all sort of stuff from the other slice. It's all about API call and initializing the Redux state and exposing the address selector and the action because we also need to select an address. So there will be synchronous uh, reducer. I mean, there will be reducer with a synchronous action, which is select address and the fetch address is asynchronous. For that, we are going to use this Redux toolkit, uh, create a sync thunk. So this fetch address is already there. API even auth service, it should be, I think, users addresses. So this is my action and here I will just change this external API and we are not passing config. So just get rid of this. Create a sync thunk. This is fetch order and fetch addresses because I'm just doing both here because we also need to fetch the addresses fetch the orders also the historical orders which the user has placed because orders also contains all sort of information okay what all you have ordered to which address and from which restaurant all sort of information you can populate on the front end based on a restaurant id and the order id so here this is my initial state addresses and the selected address and the orders selected address is an object address contains the data and the orders and now i have some these api calls asynchronous actions like uh, fetch address create address so create address also i need to add currently i have fetch order and fetch address so we can also do create address and i'm just i'm just taking care of the fulfilled promise because either you can have a fulfilled, rejected and pending. These three different state and all these different state you can also populate in the Redux state. Like in the Redux state you can just set, okay, loading true. Then uh, pending, loading true and success, loading false. All sort of animation you can do with this uh, actions. And here create address, that means you will be passing some payload, fetch address, no payload. And fetch address, no payload you are passing. And uh, I already have this, okay, selected address selector, user address selector and the user order selectors. We are just returning this orders and addresses from the Redux state. These are the selectors and then there is one action we have, which is select address. And all those things we are going to expose to our component. So you can see this is a select address is an action which you are going to trigger from the component to select a particular address. Okay, this is a, and we are also populating the selected address in the Redux state. Apart from that, all are actually the selectors giving me all the user addresses, giving me all the, the user orders. And here we are registering the user reducer to the Redux store so that we can start having this uh, user state in the Redux and your selector starts getting the data. So here we have a top sections and the user section where we are showing the user session information. And then we have these card sections and the user ad, uh, address section. So first of all, we need to find a way to fetch the address data. So address data, how we can do? We already have API call. First, we need to use a use effect, use effect hook to dispatch an action, okay, give me all the addresses. And then we can use address selector to fetch the address data, which has been returned to the Redux state, which is there in the Redux state. So you will have a use effect inside use effect. You can do both fetch addresses and fetch user orders because there is, there is already an API doing that thing. You're also getting the cart items from the selector because we need to show what is there in the cart, like what is the total price you need to pay and all sort of stuff and the cart menu item. So here we can dispatch. So we need to register that use dispatch hook, dispatch use dispatch. 
and we can just do dispatch fetch address i think we need to call it and then fetch order fetch cart items ah, that is also fine because uh, let's say in this checkout we don't have the redux state uh, how we will populate the cart items in the redux state right the, if there is a right sidebar that's already making a call to fetch the latest cart items and populating that in the redux state so that's fine even if you skip it here we will have the cart items in the redux state and from that we from there we can do it then the selected address when you click on to the address we also need to select it to selected address we can set so now uh, we can start testing this stuff like we got the addresses we got the cart items and this this is where we are showing all the addresses now we can just show address dot address dot length if it is greater than zero then you can just do a dot map and start showing the items addresses dot map so it should fetch all the 